Hello everyone, Charm Medicine here. Today I'm doing a video on what is a firewall. So, a lot of my videos I explain, you know, a lot of topics and a lot of uh, technologies, you know, like IPS, firewalls, um, you know, intrusion detection, content filtering, uh, UTMs, VPNs, all of it. But um, what I find is I get some users that do uh, email in and uh, sometimes they get confused on what a firewall is versus what an uh, IPS is or what a UTM is. Um, so I've already done a video on what a UTM is. Um, so this kind of cascades into that, but as more on the topic of what exactly a firewall does. So, for instance, uh, some people are under the impression that a firewall will block a specific URL. Uh, or a firewall will know that a specific application um, is not allowed. Um, by default, or by definition, a firewall cannot perform those tasks. Uh, a firewall looks at destination, sorry, source and destination IP addresses to first filter through that packet to see, hey, am, is the 10 network allowed to talk to the 20 dot network? Uh, and if it is, what protocols are allowed? Uh, and on what ports? So a firewall, uh, looks at layer two, oh, sorry, sorry, layer three and layer four um, of the OSI model. Uh, it looks at those particular pieces of traffic. Um, so if a firewall, you know, uh, sees a packet, uh, let's say it's destined to port 80, the firewall will check and say, first, um, is there a rule to say that this source network is not allowed to this destination network. If that is true, then the packet will drop. If it's false, meaning the traffic is allowed to go from one network to the next, the next thing it looks at is, is the destination port, in this case, port 80, allowed? Is it um, open and uh, you know traffic is allowed to pass? If the answer is yes, then the connection completes and then you get your website. If that packet has some malicious activity, the firewall does not know. The firewall doesn't care by default um, without other mechanisms. So IPSs or hosted antivirus or the such. But again, all of those are separate uh, solutions that build on top of a firewall. So if you take, for example, say, Here's Tom, and then here's Bob. Okay, so Tom is sending, let's see actually, let me just. So let's say Tom is sending traffic to Bob and he wants his source. So S is 1.1.1.1. Destination is 2.2.2.2 with a destination port okay, of 80. So between Bob, uh, sorry, between Tom and Bob, there's this firewall. Okay. Now, Bob has a web server. Okay on an HTTP server, okay, that is on port 80. Bob's address is 2.2.2.2, okay? So, now going as to how I explained it um, verbally, when this packet, so you got this little packet here, and it hits the firewall the firewall will not inspect. So say in this packet, there is some malicious code, okay? If Tom is sending the malicious code, it will not be inspected 
to buy this firewall. The firewall will simply look at the source port, or sorry, the source address, destination address, and the port as which it's going. Um, after this, if you want to inspect the payload, um, which is very important, um, we will need further instructions or further feature set on this device or more devices. So for instance, an IPS, an IPS will look at the payload. Um, if you, uh, a hosted antivirus will look at the payload. Um, you know, IDS, all of these things. Because the firewall just permits or denies traffic. It doesn't, it doesn't rip it apart, look at the payload. It doesn't do any of those features. This is why the push has become Next Gen Firewall, NGFW, which I've explained a lot. I've shown a lot of um, products that do this. NGFWs or Next Gen Firewalls have what is known as Layer 7 visibility. Layer 7, the application layer, um, is where right now most of these attacks are happening. Okay, At the network level, um, the attacks are still prevalent. Look at DDoS, for instance. So a firewall, right? Um, a firewall, if there's packets being sent to random ports, will drop all those packets. But if the firewall is receiving packets on a port that's um, been, been allowed, there are still some things we can do. For instance, a firewall would have the ability to say, hey, um, if the session doesn't complete, so say it's just a bunch of SYN traffic, so just SYN or just one-way UDP traffic, there would be some ways, you know, with some older Cisco ASAs and some older just uh, basic firewalls to say, okay, um, you know, drop these packets if this happens, right, under this event. Hey, uh, do not allow... Uh, when side pings drop certain pa certain protocols, so do not allow ICMP. Um, you know, do not allow uh, whatever FTP traffic. Um, so uh, it's very important that you understand the differences between what a regular firewall is uh, versus an IPS or something like that. Basic way of understanding it is um, a layer a firewall allow permits and allows traffic. Um, an IPS and all the other higher visibility, the layer seven visibility uh, services will inspect that traffic. It's kind of like going down the street. Uh, you know, you see a car driving down the street. Um, the car in this case is allowed on the road. Uh, we have legal vehicles that are uh, able to be on the road and then we have uh, vehicles that have been they're not street legal so the vehicle is going down the road but you don't know if that person that driver is under the influence maybe they're drunk or something like that so you'll need police cars that are on the roads to in further inspect um, that particular car, right? So is it acting erratically? Um, you know, maybe it's swerving and, and, you know, which would be kind of like anomaly based detection. And, um, those are things that we definitely need in the network security field. We cannot rely on devices that only permit and deny traffic. We need more visibility. So I hope this explains, um, how, uh, basic firewall works. Um, obviously, uh, there are more um, there are more features in just a firewall, but uh, I'm just covering the most basic of uh, features. What separates a firewall from the rest? If you have any questions or comments, you can always visit me on my website shamanc.com, and always I'm always available on my email if you have any questions. Uh, you know, through your work or your home network, Sean at Chamancy.com. We'll see everyone.